Okay, we have another stamp along scene right here. It's a really simple composition, just made up of the lakeside cove, the cloud with sun, and the cloud cumulus. I wanted to do a scene kind of in a warmer color scheme. Could be a sunrise, or I don't know if it's so much of a sunrise. It looks more like a sunset to me. Um, maybe I need a few more pinks and blues or something like that to be a sunrise, but um, anyway. Um, warm tones, but what we talk about in this lesson here, this lesson's kind of about, you know, choosing some stamp pads within a given color scheme, okay? And I show you just how to line them up, going from light tones to darker tones, okay? And uh, as far as the toning process goes, lining them up from light to dark, it's kind of a good exercise because, you know, we just go from one lighter tone to an incrementally darker tone until we get to that, you know, our darkest of tones that we have in our um, value range or color scheme that we're uh, layering down on the uh, layering on the paper. Okay, so the retention of lights and darks. If I was to spin this around and if this was stamped in green or something like that, it would be no different in terms of how we've handled things like meadows before and grassy areas just retaining kind of a bit of an oscillation between light, dark, and light, and dark again, okay? And that creates our uh, lighting scheme in the scene. If we have some reflected light down here and the actual light source, the actual light source, I don't want to tone out. I want that to be the lightest thing in the scene. And also I want some areas of reflected light, um, like down here in the water, okay? But in this stamp along too, what we talk about is uh, we've used this um, gel pen for things like um, flowers in a meadow or something of that sort, but that little gel pen highlight can also reiterate kind of lighting in here, okay? So the trees, okay, on the right side of the scene have little highlights on the left side branches, okay? Even those background ones have a little dot you can see in here. Okay, certainly these ones in the foreground here, okay? But you notice the trees on the left side of the scene are right lit, okay? On this, you know, on this tree right here, there's two dots because it's dark over here, okay? But you can see how that kind of pulls this tree out from the background by just having a couple little dots on it like that. And it, again, it's on the right side of the tree because the, um, lighted source is on the right side of it, okay? You can see some areas in here, I have a few little dots of highlights on these, even that background here there has two little dots, okay? Now I'm not, you know, I mean that it's not like a strategic plan, like okay that has to have like two dots or anything like that, I'm just kind of experimenting around with these little dots here and there. Um, the, that being said, like these clouds are being illuminated from the underside, so you can see a couple little dots, you know, on the sides of the clouds facing the light, okay? Rocks down here are being, it's top lit, so you can see a few little highlights on the top surfaces kind of facing the light. You can see this one over here, the light is coming from over here, so that rock has the highlights just like the trees on the left side of it. So all of the little details like that kind of reiterate your lighting direction and uh, can really kind of bring a scene to life and uh, kind of hold your viewer's interest, I think, a little bit more um, when you do a scene like that. So it's all in the details, I think, you know, as far as uh, the retention of a uh, um, whoever's viewing it. That's the way we used to see it in illustration, you know. So you have an illustration in a magazine, people are flipping page by page by page, and my concept was if you can get the person to kind of like stop and do a double take, you know, you've done your job. And then if they look even further, that's um, even better. So, um, fun stuff here. And, uh, hope you enjoy it if you stamp along with it. Go ahead and mix and match your pads and uh, 
just kind of line them up and uh, start your uh, toning process like that. You can even bring pinks or whatever into it. If you only have browns and yellows, then use those ones. If you have oranges and reds, magentas, whatever. Move it into a purple scheme if you want to, you know, with yellows and reds and, you know, um, transitioning into whatever colors you want on the outside. The outside is where it's more kind of darker and the inside is where it's lighter. So control your lights or control your dark tones by keeping them kind of in the shadow areas and on the perimeter, and then your interior area will retain the lights um, that you've uh, kept, you know, by avoiding it with all those lighter and medium tones, okay? And that's one of the big things about um, lighting within uh, scenes. So anyways, have fun doing that if you choose to uh, stamp it out. And uh, like I said, if you ever have any questions, just let us know. Okay, let's stamp out a nice warm sunrise scene, okay? I've pulled out some different colored pads, different companies here, and um, just to kind of make a point as far as your color layering and uh, progression through uh, various values to create um, kind of the desired effect you're going after. We have Marvies and Ranger, and uh, the Memento is a Sukuneko brand of ink. You can use whatever brands of ink you, inks you want to, okay? But one of the things that I used to do in my classes was I'd have people pick out, you know, their color scheme. And what they would do is they would just kind of line them up, kind of in, in an order, roughly, where they thought it looked like a transition going from kind of light colors to dark colors, okay? So it looks something like this, let's lighter, light, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, 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 I don't know. You don't have to know for sure either, okay? Something like that, just in general, okay? And doing that simple exercise like that, believe it or not, makes things, I think, much easier in the, uh, the process when you start layering down these different inks, okay? If you can't tell what pad comes before the other, then it doesn't really matter. They're close enough, you know, so one used before the other, that's not going to be a problem. You know, if, it, if you go a little bit darker, then you go a little bit lighter, in other words, and you'll see what I mean when we get into this. Okay, so this is the Lakeside Cove stamp. It's one of the more popular ones. Let's go ahead and use that one for our purpose here. A lot of people have that. If you don't have that, that's fine. You can even just stamp a couple trees out or something, you know. Uh, you know, I'd stamp any of that. It could just be a sky that you're doing. All right, which way do we want to do this? Do we want to do it this way? Let's just go centered, okay? Okay. Now this isn't going to reach um, both the left and right side of the paper. So what we're going to do, so I can get up again, I can get up this side, take this, overlap the first impression, and ink up again. Overlap about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch or so the previous impression and you have a nice continuous um, Line lakeside, you know shoreline basically all right Now let's use Something like this cloud with Sun stamp Let's use this in kind of a medium tone, okay? How about, uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with brown. Hmm. I changed my mind. 
I usually do that. Let me go with ochre. It's a little bit lighter. Let me see, I think I might have some color on this already, but we'll go with the ochre. Go with an orange, ochre, light brown, pink even, whatever. All right. Now let's say this is going to be a like a sunrise. So I'm going to mask off these rocks. No need to mask off the trees though because they're solid, all right? And I'll kind of put this down peeking out from behind the trees, okay? If you have something kind of light like that or something dark next to it, it's going to make that thing seem even lighter by contrast. And plus it looks kind of cool kind of peeking out from behind the trees, I think. Say something like, uh, like that. Okay. So let's go for some additional cloud formations. Add a little bit of brown on this stamp. I don't want to take the time to clean it properly right now. So I'm just going to scrub it on that a little bit, as you saw. And let's go like this. See these billows here? Always have the billows kind of facing towards your light source. In this case, the light source is going to be that sun down there. Okay. I'm blotting off kind of around this area up here. Change the angle, oops, have the billows facing down, right? Towards the light source. Okay. And we need another one right over here. So we have our composition. Looks kind of weird, doesn't it? But we're going to bring in a lot of different tone into the scene. And hopefully we'll have a nice uh, golden, you know, uh, reflection down here, shimmering waters and the sunset. Just in general, now we have our composition laid out like that. That's going to remain nice and light. Okay, but if I want some of these billows to remain nice and light, like the light is shining on them, then we're going to avoid it with the toning process, okay? And if you want a little bit of a kind of nice shimmering water in here, then leave some of the water lighter, okay? So I think it would be kind of cool if there was like some light like this, meaning this area out here will be dark, and this area out here will be dark, but leave this kind of, not as is, it would be too stark, but just lighter in general, okay? So I'll show you how that's achieved. Let's start off with our, I don't even remember what colors I was using. Let's try this antique linen. Antique linen is gonna be very, very, very light. So it's just gonna be kind of minimal coverage with this. Um, Cause I'll wanna move on. Okay, but Having a really light color to start off with is kind of nice because um, you can kind of establish your lighting scheme in the scene without making too much of a commitment to that um, scheme because this is just a, such a pale color, okay? All right, now remember, if you want certain areas to remain light, then don't tone them out too much. Now this is a the first color, so, um, you know, we don't have to be too careful with it. It's more about kind of coverage at this point in time. Okay, now I'd like to give my rocks a little bit of tone. Remember this area down here is going to be in shadow and we're going to have kind of light coming across here. Okay, so retain your areas up here. Just 
kind of oscillate your light and dark a little bit, you know, with the use of shadow, darkness, okay. <laughs> Alright, I didn't retain too much of that light down there, but I'll just kind of avoid that um, with my darker tones. Okay, that's enough for that uh, antique linen. Let's move up into more of a yellowy tone. Here's a mustard seed. Okay, I'm going to add it roughly in the same areas that I used um, the antique linen, the first color. Okay, now if you didn't have something like that antique linen, you can certainly just start right off with uh, like a yellow. Um, usually people have yellows in their, um, you know, collection of pads. It's kind of one of your basics, right? Uh, so, but if you don't, go with light brown or something of that sort. Okay, it's, now this yellow is very bright, so it's really uh, adding a good degree of intensity to the scene. It won't look this hot, though, in the end result, okay? We're just kind of building the, up the tones right now. Okay, I'll start working around this area more and more, okay? Bring in a little bit in here, kind of a pale version of it. I mean, a dry version on my stylus tool, my sponge. Okay, kind of see the uh, lighting scheme starting to uh, be a little bit more developed. Okay, ochre. A lot of people don't have ochre, but if you have like a, you know, like a walnut stain or something like that, or an orange, you can use that. But if you have the tone, actually the ochre is the one that I stamped the clouds out in, and sun, so it's good to bring that one back into the mix as far as the process goes. some of the rocks remain a little bit lighter, like it's capturing some of that light, or the tops of some. If it's kind of hard to control it with the stylus tool, you can always bring in some of those um, details into the area with uh, something like uh, markers, okay? Getting a little bit warmer and warmer, okay? Next color would be something like this brown. See that? I kind of put some down like that. And I kind of just drag it in like so. Because it builds up a little bit of a puddle when I just add some of it down like that and then just drag it in. shadows down here. Reiterate what's going on in the shadows with some additional tone. This area is looking a little bit lighter because I'm taking the area around it and making it darker. Okay, like that. All right. Let's introduce pink into the mix. Let's see what that might look like. Okay. Looks more red, huh? Or like a orange, like a dark orange, maybe. 
pinks after all. Red, you know, kind of pinks a kind of a lighter version of red. And red and yellow mixed to form orange. In this case, they layer to form orange. They're not kind of like physically mixing. Okay, let's go on the other side. You can see what that tone looks like, and we'll do the same thing kind of over here. Where pink overlaps some of the white, you know, we're getting more of a pure version of pink. And I like that. I like the variation. down here in the water. I think that looks kind of good. I can kind of come this way a little bit too if I want to. Okay, darker corners. Okay, uh, that's it for the pink. Let's see what I had. Okay, I still have this walnut stain. No idea if that's going to show up or not. Uh, it's a little bit of a smokier feel, I guess, to that area. By like bringing in the uh, the walnut stain over the top of the pink and orange and all that, yellow. Pretty good. It's very subtle in terms of the, the change that it's um, making. Now, like I said, you don't have to, you certainly don't have to go through as many colors as I'm going through, but this is just kind of showing you the process, you know, of, you know, just picking out whatever colors you have and just kind of uh, going with them. It's not making too much of a difference, you know, with this one. Meaning, you know, if I didn't have it, I wouldn't miss it at all, but it could potentially get a little bit... Um, more rich and vibrant, you know, the more tones that you glaze onto your scene, which is kind of what we're doing here. Okay, that's Mento. Cherry red. Very, very dark, I think. Yeah. Hitting the shadows down here a little bit more. Just working incrementally darker one step at a time, okay? When you get into the darker tones, kind of be a little bit more perimeter oriented. Don't go into the scene quite as far. This is brown. Going back to the same color that we stamped our Lakeside Coben, okay? Hit the, uh, the four corners of your scene with this. See, I'm not trying to hit all of them right at once, you know, I'm working one corner at a time. That way I can get this nice kind of transition because I'm benefiting from the wet to dry aspect. I'm not going around like this, in other words, okay? Just work one corner at a time. It's, you know, make your process that much um, smoother, okay? Bottom left-hand corner. Alright. 
bring some of these rocks in here. Okay, so that's what we have now. Kind of a nice warm tone scene, golden scene. And here's, let me show you a trick here. Um, I don't see the clouds out here anymore, right? They just became too, the whole area became darker than the clouds were stamped in. Let's take this stamp and just stamp it in a darker tone, okay? Let's go to the dark brown. I think it's going to have to be the dark brown for it to show up. Okay, I've toned the whole thing in. I'm going to wipe off the area. This whole area right here so that these billows will be uh, facing the light. And I have that tone behind it because if you just stamp it and have this whole area appear, you need something darker behind it. But there's already something darker behind it because there's all these tones in here. So I'm just going to aim that those billows towards my light source, okay? Not this way. That's That would mean the light is coming from that way. But you can see these billows are illuminated up here, okay? So if it's above the sun, then I'll have them up in this cloud kind of... You know, there's never really no right or upside down or right side up because you can use it wherever, but it's kind of like stamping it upside down because the kind of the billows are down on the underside now. Okay, so that's what that looks like. It's kind of subtle, but it's really effective. See how that's kind of nothing there, but you have this. So you have lighter forms out here, but in the darker areas, you can have darker forms. So it's just a matter of going back and re-stamping them. off with each impression be sure and re-ink okay light is coming from here so I have this like that all right <laughs> this is what it looks like I guess I could stamp it like this impression of it just right up in this area I think it could it wouldn't hurt to to have that up there that little bit of texture darker texture something like that okay now after I do that though what I like to do is I like to blend it in a little bit more so you can grab your Styles tool again, and just add a little bit more tone to those clouds now. Those darker clouds. go for some additional foreground stamps like a, like a dark tree or something. Actually that might not be a bad idea. Let's do that. As you're doing these stamp along videos you're becoming more and more advanced. <laughs> a lot of you are completely advanced. You're more, yeah. But uh, Foreground images done in black. Okay. We don't want to cover up. Now I'm just using the spree tree. I haven't used that one in a while, but this one's kind of thick. If pine tree, uh, the 196 is a little bit thinner, but um, okay. Now I don't want to just obscure everything that's going on in the background. So why don't I just use this as kind of a framing device? Let's go like 
this a little bit of a taller one. It's kind of just going right here. A smaller one right here. All right. And to just kind of balance things off a little bit more, let's go with one over here. Okay. I'll change the height of it a little bit from the two others. frames things off a little bit more. I always say this, but I need to kind of experiment around, but those trees and the like foreground elements in general would be kind of nice if uh, nice to do it in like a detailed black embossing powder so they're actually dimensional. I think that would be really fun. Okay, so we have this working right now. Um, let's take our little gel pen and let's add on a few little details to the scene, okay? We've got these nice warm tones working in here. Actually, it looks more like a sunset to me than a sunrise now. But, um, anyway, let's take a look at some of these areas right here. We have our little billowing clouds, right? They're bottom lit for the most part. Some of them are side lit, you know, where the clouds are starting to get down this way. But just in general, let's reiterate this idea of light kind of coming out towards us, okay? So I'm taking this little white gel pen and I can have these little dots, like these little flares coming out like this. this tree right here, okay, let's put a few little highlights on that tree, if I can. This, this pen is a little bit thick. Oh, hmm, I, I don't know if I tested this one. I have some of these yellow pens too. I hadn't used them in so long, I wasn't quite sure if they were working or not. Uh, let me try it. This is a Uniball Signo pen. Yeah, for some reason, some of these pens, they ink. This is a different type of Uniball Signo. It's, it's a different consistency. All right, forget it. Let's try the uh, the white paint pen. I mean, uh, I keep saying that. It's the white gel pen, okay? Let's put a few little of these uh, little highlights in the water. I like to go for these kind of horizontal little sparkles. They call it kind of specular light. In photography, it's light that's whiter, or light that's lighter than, <laughs> light that's brighter than white, okay? It's like a reflection, like a glare coming at you, okay? Rather than like a white piece of paper, it's like, you know, like I had this pen here, this little glare is coming at it, so it's lighter than this paper down here, okay? But that's what kind of specular light is. Okay, let's put a little highlights on some of these rocks. And I'll put them on some of the top surfaces of these rocks, okay? Like, see this one right here? A couple of dots on it. Makes it look like the light is reflecting off of it. The top sides of some of these ones. 
some of these distant ones. Okay. So it's not fun here. It kind of gives it a, you know, the water surface, a reflective surface. And if you want to, you can kind of put some little highlights in some of these trees, like, you know, like they're capturing some light. Sometimes they're just a couple little dots on your foreground imagery creates a little bit of a separation between these foreground elements and the background elements. Be careful with these white dots though. Um, not in that it's a precarious thing, but see these dots really stand out a lot. So I'm not going to want to do too much because it's dark over here, so they really stand out. I can add more in the lighter areas. Okay, like something like this. On some of these clouds. These clouds are bottom lit, right? So I can put a few little highlights on them. Especially in the lighter areas where it represents kind of light hitting the bottom side of that cloud and becoming illuminated. Not exactly a silver line cloud, but uh, kind of a line cloud. And you can look for the little shapes in there. Um, let's see where, okay. So see, here's the cloud with sun stamp, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm kind of illuminating you know, putting some little highlights where there's highlights in the image. So I'm just reiterating that with the white pen. So sometimes in shadows, I reiterate what's going on in the shadows. I'll deepen the shadow with tone, right? But then in the, the lit areas of an image, I'll reiterate that with highlights, okay? With light. Shadows dark, highlights light. Same thing with the... Uh, like side cove stamp, right? Shadows down here are darker, and then we can see these areas up here are lighter, okay? So what you do is you just put a couple little dots on the light areas. As long as this didn't get too dark, you could put, you know, a white pen there. So that's why some of these ro rocks in here are, have been, you know, left kind of light or lighter, okay? So say for example, these rocks in the background are a little bit lighter, so I put a few more dots, but see this rock right here? Just for an example, I'll put maybe a couple little highlights on that, but I won't put too many because it is a darker rock, okay? So I just put those like five little dots there. So what that looks like from arm's distance is it just looks like that. It's kind of, it can be subtle, but it makes the rock seem more dimensional because the top side is reflecting it. So it happens in everywhere, right? Like my hand here, um, you know, the light is coming from above, so you can see it lighter right here, and it's darker down here, right? Because I have this table top lit. Um, this pen here, I don't know if you can see it on the pen, but, <laughs> okay, but like the stamp pad here, right? Top lit, and can you see that little highlight on here? It's because it's reflecting the light coming from above. And then, of course, this is the same pink on the side right here, but when we turn this like that, the top side of it is lighter with that little illumination, right? And then it's a darker pink on the side. That's the same thing that's going on these rocks right here. All right? Same thing with everything, you know? Here's a green pen. It's darker on the sides, top lit. You know, you can put a little dots here, and that's, you know, if I was rendering this, you know, as an illustration, that's what I would do. And there's those little reflective things, but that's kind of the concept here, right? So let's take a look at some of these trees. We have our illumination coming from here, so let's see if we can add a little bit of illumination on the side of this tree facing that light. So see that background tree there has a few little dots on the side facing that light. Okay, now let's do it a little bit right here as well.
Sometimes a couple dots will do, you know? You don't need to do too many, right? See that right back there? So what it looks like is this. Um, you can do the same thing over here, but on this, on this side, the light is coming from the right side, okay? So let's put a few little highlights on the sides of some of those trees. Okay. Subtle, but you can see a little bit of it in here. That tree is illuminated on this side with one, two, three, four dots, right? A couple dots on that side, you know. I mean, you don't have to be quite so, you know, literal and deliberate, you know, with this. You know, you can just kind of add it here and there, but just in terms of kind of a, you know, uh, extra little tip on what you can do in terms of lighting direction. We've talked about shadows before. You know, pens are easy to use as well. This is kind of in the color scheme, right? But, you know, if you can't get, you know, very close, you know, with the kind of the sponging type of thing, then you can kind of go in here and, you know, kind of, I don't know, draw on some, you know, additional tone and shadows. Like that, right? Just look at the image, and if there's shadows on the image, you can make those shadows a little bit more pronounced. Okay. See so that little shadow at the base of that rock? I don't know. We can use some of it over here as well. But that being said, warm tones. Going back to our color scheme, just kind of picking out your colors uh, in the color scheme of your choice. In this case, it was going to be a kind of a dusk or dawn type of thing. Line up your pads, starting from lightest one and going into the darker ones. Brands really don't matter. So it's, it's more about the type of ink that we're using. These are dye-based inks. You know, we had things from Ranger, Sukuneko, Marvy. Um, if you have some color box ones or Stampin' Up, you know. Um, but this, that's kind of why I like a nice range of tones. As far as my color choices, um, I have all kinds of different pads and a range of, uh, you know, the different um, hues, starting from light tones and the darker tones, light browns, dark medium browns, dark browns. I use the lighter and the medium ones the most, but, you know, the darker ones kind of become a little bit more perimeter oriented and often they're being layered on top of my lighter tones and medium tones, so a lot of times it almost doesn't even matter. Like if I put a purple on top of that, it would probably just look darker because, you know, the colors underneath it are going to be showing through. So I like a lot of these types of things, you know, the lighter tones, um, because they get the most amount of coverage. The darker tones, again, are more perimeter oriented. So, um, if you like a color out there, you know, and one brand has it in a certain line and another one doesn't have it, you don't have to stick to a certain brand, you know. I'm more kind of color-oriented myself. If I see a color in a certain line, um, then I get that one. But anyway, I know what you're thinking, uh, a lot of you, but, you know, you, you got to have them all, you know, and uh, I don't blame you when I see a lot of ink pads and things like that. Uh, I don't know. If all things are the same, I just I, I get them all too. Um, but I guess that's the fun of it too, of being a stamper, or crafter, or whatever. It's, uh, it's getting the stuff. Although, we're all the same too. We start running out of space, so. Uh, I tell people to just use what they have. All right, so sunset scenes, retain some of your areas of light and dark like you would a grassy meadow and things like that. It's the same exact concept, you know, you're just retaining some areas of light 
and especially if you have a light source in there, don't tone that all out. I mean, you don't want to have like, if you tone that out, some people like, I want that sun to be yellow, right? So if that sun was all yellow, you'd have to make the area kind of around it much darker for it to look like it's bright. So that's why I kind of I retain the white of it as much as possible. But if I do run a little bit of color in there, it's going to be the muted version or the dry brushed version of whatever the lightest tone would be. Um, in this case, I think it was that Distress Ink, uh, like the antique linen or something like that, okay? So get a little hint of some colors in something like a moon or something like that if you want to, you know, if you don't want it stark white, just kind of, kind of put a muted version of it in there. But I would retain the lightness. This ref little reflection down here, you know, that looks good in terms of uh, reflecting the light. And it just means that you don't take your medium tones and your darker tones into that area. Just retain it. Don't touch it, you know. The darker you get, it kind of stays on the outside a lot more and more, okay? Doesn't mean I don't bring in a little bit of a darker tone within these shadow areas, but I'm talking about it as a whole, okay? So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the scene and the color scheme and uh, that little demonstration on the gel pen as far as the usage goes and defining or helping to define your light source and the light direction and how it would uh, fall maybe on certain objects, you know, depending on where they're located in relation to that light source. This tree has highlights on the, uh, the left side. These ones have it on the left, uh, no, on the right side of the tree, sorry. And the trees on the right side have the highlights on the left side, so clouds up here are bottom lit, so they have a little highlight on the bottom side of those clouds, so. Anyways, that's really fun stuff. You can use that gel, uh, gel pen for just about anything. Stars in the sky, flowers in a meadow, or just highlights on various objects throughout a scene. Okay, thanks for watching and stamping along with us.